Tavares, and I'm the body shop manager. My name is Ezekiel Casas, and I'm a suspension technician for Exotic Suspensions. I'm uh, Frank Menjades, I'm the head of suspensions at Exotic Suspension. My name is Joel Alvarez, I'm the owner of Exotic Suspensions in Odessa, Texas. The words trust. Trust me is a word that has been thrown around, used, abused, and I stand 100% behind that word. Trust me. Uh, as my customer walked in, and he had this idea with this truck, I didn't know how to actually put it in paper for him. I didn't know how to actually give him physically a picture of what he wanted. Um, I knew exactly what he wanted. What was crazy is we were both on the same page, but I couldn't present that to him. So what else do you tell the customer? Trust me. We started tearing the truck apart to realize the truck was not in real good shape to begin with. The frame was bent on it. The truck was completely rusted through the bottom. We ended up having a, and we ended up having to buy another truck just to salvage it, put it together. The customer was not fully aware of, of, about what was going on with it. I was almost more afraid to tell him how bad the project was. So when he initially came to me and told me he just needed a regular paint job, I was real quick to jump on it. But after tearing the truck apart, I, I almost regretted getting into it to the point to where it was easier to refund him his deposit than to continue with the project. I talked to the customer and he openly told me, what is your opinion on it? What do you think? What would you do with it? Um, me, on a personal note, I've always wanted to build one personally for myself, to put it in my personal collection, um, and he gave me open reins for it. Kind of nice building it on somebody else's dime and him pretty much telling you, you build it how you want. You build it how you would have built it for yourself. And that's what I did. That's when it all turned for me and, and I realized that it didn't matter how many hours I put in it, how much work I did to it. Um, at this point, it wasn't about the money no more. It was building my dream truck at the same time I was building his. We did all the, the brake conversions. They had all the old disc, disc brakes and we put all new, new disc pads and rotors. We tore down like all the front end, replaced all the ball joints, tie rods. Uh, we did the upper control arms. We installed the airbags on it. Then we ran all the lines, installed the compressor. The, um, we did the, the tank that holds the air in. I thought it was gonna take forever, the way the truck looked when we first saw it. <laughs> It was pretty rough, it was pretty bad. We ended up doing a front and rear airbag kit on it, disc brake conversion on the truck on the rear, um, upper control arms on the truck, new ball joints, the whole works on the suspension itself. The truck was not hacked up, was not cut, so the inside of the bed would still remain stock. Now the bottom was all rusted, the bolts, had to just put the airbags, connect the lines all the way to the back, it's a compressor. The worst part had to have been the cab. You know, I mean, it had to be done from the floor up. You know, it was all rusted out. Cab corners, floors, uh, the doors had to be replaced. Uh, the bed, bed's practically brand new, both sides. When we put it on the, on the lift, we took off the tires, the spring shocks, everything came off, everything went on brand new. Believe it or not, we ended up primering this truck, block sanding it five to six times before we got it to that paint. Uh, me being an engine builder myself, I've always liked the small block 350s. Um, they just, they appeal to the period. They're pretty easy to work on and you can physically get them running good. And they're just nice engines overall. Plus they fit the period of the truck. So I disassembled the engine myself. We sent it off to the machine shop. We kind of put it back together uh, here in-house. Uh, we put a cam in it, uh, went through the internals, put all new gaskets in it. Once you start putting all the little chrome accessories on it, um, you get that final look to it, the fine detail to it that will set the truck apart from anyone else. One piece by one piece, individually one of my guys, every one of my guys started touching it putting their little flavor into it, their ideas into it, and 
that's the masterpiece we built with. They, it got done. It got done. It was a big old task, but you know, it came out real good. My favorite, favorite part of the truck would have to be the interior. It's just real plain, simple, and clean. There's no electrical devices in there other than the system and the amp speakers. The windows are still manual. The door panels were custom stitched to the period of the truck. Just the little details in it that a lot of people would be worried about putting leather in a vehicle like that, putting different looks to it. To me, I can sit in the inside of that truck for months, just sit in there. The best part of the build was realizing that I can build my own dream truck with my own two hands, um, with my team standing behind me full-fledged. Um, I realized that anybody can fork over a check and just buy a truck like this. But the real idea was being able to build it with your own hands. As I presented the truck to the customer, I remember the expression on his face, just like, I, I don't know if that's the expression he saw when he saw his newborn, you know, but it kind of felt like that. He kind of looked at me and just said, wow. After about two, three weeks of working in them, working around them, the long nights, the sweat, tear, blood, arguing, different ideas, you get real attached to these cars. As crazy as it sounds, you get so attached to them. I've come across a couple of them, the C10 being one, that I've almost came to the point to tell the customer how much you want for it. It's just hard to get rid of them. You see all your hard work, and you're not giving it away. Understandable, you're not giving it away. You just, you want to keep them on. But you can't keep them on. That's what's crazy. So what do you do? You let your art just hit the streets. You let other people enjoy the, what you do. And that in itself will bring more customers. Because um, it won't do you any good if you just keep them put up. So, you might as well let it go. It's paid for, so let it go. <laughs>